Hey, Smack Talk fans. Thought I'd get out of my house and watch that new Christopher Nolan film, Tenet. Ugh, I tell you, I'm a bit worried about all this coronavirus stuff. That shit could really do me in. <coughs> well, poo. What am I going to watch now? Um, there's that new Mulan film. Ugh, I don't really want to watch another Disney film. And they're in bed with China with this one. I'll get all those Chinese bots and shills attacking me and my channel if I review it. If only I could protect myself. Scare them back to the great firewall of China. Hmm, wait a moment. Hey, shills. It's Tiananmen Square. Winnie the Pooh. The anti rightist struggle. Who shall bow? The great leap forward. The cultural revolution. Human rights. Freedom. Independence. Multi-party Multi system. system. Free Tibet. Free Hong Kong. Uyghur Muslim re-education camps. Mulan fucking sucks! Bloody hell. The House of Mouse keeps plopping out these atrocious live-action adaptations of classic animated Disney films. They make a lot of money, despite being soulless cash grabs that are either stilted facsimiles or nightmare fuel for the kiddies. But Mulan is an entirely different monster. This adaptation of a classic was meant to release early this year, but due to the advent of COVID-19, aka the Shanghai Shivers, it was delayed for a cinematic release, so Disney had to put it in storage. But time is money, so they fucked it off onto their Disney Plus service with a price tag of 30 freedom bucks, or 20 Brexit bullion for us Brits. Disney has not been doing well financially due to the pandemic, so this was a vain attempt to recoup costs and gain exposure for a love child betwixt Mickey and Winnie. To make this profitable in China, Disney colluded with the Chinese Ministry of Propaganda, and the House of Mouse was more than willing to swallow anything they gave them. This is not your typical adaptation, as Disney wanted a more realistic and grounded Mulan story. Ah! Or not. Ignore the trailers, Disney drops all pretenses of it being a realistic war movie and have opted to go for an over-the-top wuja film. Disney wanted the best of both worlds by trying to pander to Western Disney fans and China, but ends up appeasing no one. No one with taste, at least. Disney fans want sugar-coated twee fun, which they won't get. And for Chinese audiences, unless it's The Fast and the Furious, they don't want to know. Besides, China is probably tired of this heroic bint, as they've had Mulan films for years, and some of them look way better than... whatever the fuck this thing is. Usually these Disney live-action remakes have something recognisable from the animated source material, but in Mulan, all the fun elements have been gutted. It has no comedy, no romance, it has none of those catchy songs that homosexuals and drama students love to sing. It's all so joyless. This adaptation is not based on the animated Mulan, it's suggested by the narrative poem The Ballad of Mulan? What? How does that work? Not even based on a true story or inspired by, but suggested? That's a new one. No wonder this film is Chinese propaganda with a Disney veneer. But Disney doesn't care and badly wanted those China bucks, so here we are. Fitting that 2020 is the Chinese Year of the Rat. Fitting that 2020 is the Chinese Year of the Rat. Motherfucker! We begin our story in ancient China, as Mulan's father narrates and blows smoke up his daughter's ass about how powerful she is. We see from a young age, Mulan is brimming with magical chi and is the chosen one. I'm the Avatar! You gotta deal with it! So, pretty much this. She's all-powerful from the start, which makes the later training montages redundant. Basically, she grows up to be Superman with tits, and her kryptonite is wet markets. She is supposed to be like spiritual energy that everyone has, but for the purpose of this film, it's a magical plot button that gets Mary Wu out of scrapes. It's here that Disney have westernized Chinese values, so Chi has been turned into The Force, and there were times I was thinking, I've already seen this fucking movie. 
But Mulan is too special for her own good and gets reprimanded by her dear dad, Zi Ma, looking strangely like Chinese President Xi Jinping and is portrayed as a positive father figure. Ooh, someone's trying to get their social credit score up. He tells Mulan she must control her Shi Chi because it will bring the family great dishonor. But actually, it's her joining the military that does that. At times, Mulan outwardly displays Chi powers, but no one cares enough to burn her at the stake for it. Cut to the Silk Road years later, and a poor Arab man gets body snatched by a bored looking witch who's only half committed to wearing whiteface. At a nearby garrison, the guards noticed Uyghur Muslims off in the distance, out for revenge. Oh, my bad, they are a Mongol horde. Is it me, or is there a slight Islamic invader vibe here? These Huns do look like they are LARPing as ISIS. Also, the witch infiltrates the garrison as a Middle Eastern man and causes acts of terrorism. I think that's intentional and feeds into the whims of the glorious CCP. These raiders are from the Roran clan, led by Bori Khan, and although they are fierce warriors, they rely a lot on their witch friend, Zhan Yang. Aren't you Mongolians having military prowess? They have to rely on black magic, and indeed, the only reason they are successful in attacking China is because the witch has shape-shifting powers, killer magical throwing knives, and can turn into a very angry flock of birds. At the Imperial City, the witch disguises herself as a messenger to deliver misinformation about the Northern Invaders to Emperor Jet Li, who's been dubbed over by what sounds like a dying chain smoker. We'll destroy this roaring army and the witch. It's very noticeable that the sound mixing and dubbing has been fucked through a garbage bag. There's a lot of talking off camera and narration to make things easy for dubbing because Disney cut corners. Also, some actors are dubbed while some speak with an American accent and others a Chinese accent. So there is no care for consistency. Back to Chinatown, and Mulan has grown up to be a lady badass. Sentient plank of wood and CCP shill Yi Fei Lu tries to play the protagonist, Hua Mulan, but her entire acting ability is having a permanent blank expression with a mile-long Nanking Massacre stare. She cannot emote to save her life, which is fitting considering this line. This is my sad face. This is my curious face. And now I'm confused. Her line delivery in general is terrible. Black Wind and I rode alongside two rabbits running side by side. I think one was a male, one was a female. I, I'm sorry, what? Black Wind and I rode alongside two rabbits running side by side. I think one was a male, one was a female. Slow down, dear. Lay off the monster energy drinks. She stands in good company, as everyone else took acting classes from a cardboard cutout. It's because of this, characters lack energy, and so the whole movie feels like it's being acted out by unfeeling robots. Emperor Jet Li looks like he's waiting for death to take him already. I've never seen an actor look so disinterested. The plot progresses like the original stories. Mulan fails housewife training, Emperor needs meat fodder for the horde, Mulan's father is too old to fight, Mulan gets sad, cross-dresses, steals her father's stuff to help the war effort, and runs off to the army to surround herself with boys. On her travels, the story takes a different turn as Mulan hallucinates an LSD phoenix. They gave up comic relief Eddie Murphy Dragon for a CGI alien bird that occasionally pops up to look cool when Mulan feels empowered. At Chinese boot camp, the live action liberties take effect. If you were expecting a sexy Shang, then you're out of luck. The character has been split in two. You have Commander Tung, played by Donnie Yen, who acts like he's got a bamboo stick up his ass. Can't have Mulan falling in love with her superiors in the age of hashtag me too, so her love interest is Yosun An, playing Hong Kwai. I think there is a love interest there. I don't know. The romantic subplot is unformed because the pacing of this film is utterly fucked as dramatic moments zip by like a marathon runner with diarrhea. Characterization is non-existent because the plot is very thin and designed to get the audience to the next excessively designed computer-generated scene with oversaturated colors like someone puked up half-eaten crayons all over it. Mulan's disguise works and she is quickly accepted as one of the lads. I told you to line up for showers. 
line up for showers? What showers? It's ancient China. Baths, maybe. But no one's going to give a garrison a fully functioning advanced shower system. Do they have to line up for a shower of rain? You can tell idiots wrote this. Anyway, Mulan is afraid to shower in front of men. In fact, Willy seemed to blow her mind and she has some sort of seizure at the sight of Dick. That is the face of a woman getting some good D. After getting an eyeful of noodles, Mulan resides herself to a life of pointlessly binding her itty bitty titties, watching men struggle with training while she does everything with ease, and conversing with conscripted morons. These cretins don't add much comedy value, like the misfits from the animated version, and that's a shame, because this film desperately needs levity. Instead, they act like obnoxious... Well, there's no easy way to put this. Cousin fuckers. But her time in the army is fraught with danger, as bathing in front of guys is a source of trouble for Mulan. If she is seen to have an innie instead of an outie, her gender bender ruse has been rumbled. Because Mulan doesn't bathe, that raises suspicion, as one of her comrades can smell tuna sub sandwich in the barracks. Yeah, get a good whiff. This is the closest thing to romance you'll get between these two. The hiding chi and gender plot point is very confusing. Mulan is afraid to show off she is one with the force because girls can't wield chi. It's for manly men warriors, and if a woman uses it, then it's a great dishonor. Yet, she's diligent enough with her disguise that she wouldn't have to worry about being found out as a girl, and her chi prowess only solidifies her identity as a dude. It's just pointless jeopardy to make up for the fact she has been written so poorly and overpowered. It's artificial hardship because she's amazing from the get-go. All you had to do was copy the animated film where she is an ordinary girl who trains very, very hard and doesn't need supernatural powers to get an edge. But that's just a suggestion. Ugh, I'm getting bored of this. I'm taking a break. Finally, some naked bathing! But it's Disney, so no tatty bojangles for you. It was a fucking dance! The film tries to create some romantic tension between Mulan and Hong Huai by having a brief skinny dipping moment. Hong Huai, believing Mulan is a guy, decides a nude bathing moment is the perfect time to say, let's be friends. It's awkward as fuck and doesn't create any sexual tension or give Hong Kwai any inkling that Mulan pees sitting down. There is no real warmth or romance between them, really. I'd say Mulan ends up with a better connection with the Wicked Witch of the East. They physically touch more as well and get very close. But I think magic lesbians wouldn't go over well with the CCP. Hot lesbian witches, think about it, it's fucking genius. Back at Bori Khan's Yurt of Doom, guys who look like Mongolian raiders instead of Islamic ninja assassins make plans to take over the Empire. I'm really not sure who I'm supposed to be rooting for. I mean, Bori is trying to avenge his father's death at the hands of the Emperor, and the Warren tribes want to take back land stolen from them. I guess they have been wronged. War is morally complex. Also, Mongolian Jason Momoa took care of Witchy when everyone else had scorned her and exiled her. He even gives her a place by his side as second in command. She makes out she's a slave, but I can't see how he is enslaving her, and she can turn into a hawk and fuck off whenever she wants. Pori is pretty progressive, really. The witch is allowed to be herself and not tied down to traditional gender roles like the Chinese. Bori is bringing feminism to China. Is that a bad thing? But I thought Disney was progressive. Uh, which is it? What values are you going with? Feminism bad, but Mulan empowered, but also submits to men? Uh, gender roles good? No, bad. Uh, Disney good? No, military good. China bad? No, progressive good, bad, but... Uh, Bori attacks another garrison by sending in his one-woman army to scratch people to death and strangle them with dress sleeves. The fighting is so horribly over-edited, and the weird camera rotations create a dizzying display of utter nonsense. This attack calls Mulan and the army to action, although Mulan feels guilty she hasn't told anyone about her veg, and that might make her not as good a warrior, even though she has hyper chi to kick serious ass. Which she does! After bullet time dodging arrows from Mongolians, she finds herself going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the witch. 
She makes Mulan question her gender, and then throws a knife at her chest so hard it makes the wire stunt team break their collective backs. Mulan thinks, fuck it, no one's giving me attention anymore, might as well come out as a girl and get my chi out for the lads. So she defiantly takes off all her armor. The same armor that saved her life, but something something girl power, teehee, living my best life. Her army buddies are being eviscerated, but Mulan dramatically shows up to win the battle for them. Mulan is about war, but it's also a family-friendly Disney movie, don't forget. So you have these epic battles with no blood, and Mulan just kicks people, like really, really hard so they get paralyzed. It's not just a bad Mulan adaptation, it's a bad homage to wuja films. For those of you who don't know, the wuja genre of films is about martial artist heroes, films like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and Hero, which feature beautifully choreographed fights and stylized action. Mulan tries to replicate this, but all the finesse gets fucked out of a window as the film goes overboard with the computer-generated visual buggery in flashy Technicolor. This is amplified in no small part by the horrible editing that has nauseating quick cuts. I'd expect these visuals and action sequences from a bombastic Bollywood film, but not a $200 million piece of Chinese propaganda. At least with Bollywood movies, you can have a good laugh at its absurdity. As soldiers are getting pummeled by siege weaponry and magic birds, things get even more ridiculous as Mulan single-handedly wrecks the horde's shit by using chi powers to start an avalanche. Unfortunately, Mulan was never told what collateral damage is, and Hong Kwai gets caught up in the flurry of snow. Hong Kwai appears to be allergic to snow, or swallowed too much of the stuff because it kills him. So Mulan uses force heal on his wounded, uh, pride? What did he die of? Uh, and then she evaporates from using her last bit of force energy. The Rise of Skywalker is a terrible movie, and... No, wait. I think I'm having a stroke. Blech! Sadly, Mulan's army pals don't appreciate her gender reveal party, despite her saving their asses, so they exile her. Mulan has a little cry over the big mean boys. I'm sorry, but you were the one who took off your armor, you silly bitch. No matter, because the Wicked Witch shows up to talk feminist theory and give away the Roran's battle plans. Well, that makes things easy. Mulan returns to her comrades to give away the battle plans. With this info, all is forgiven and the gender deceit is promptly resolved, so all the drama disappears quicker than a Chinese dissenter. In fact, they admire her honesty so much they make her lead the charge. Emboldened by her new simp army, they go to save Emperor Jet Li, where they fight more mongoloids in a spectacle of parkour and bloodless murder. Things get even more absurd as Jet Li is separated from his guards so he can go off and fight Bori himself. But what follows is the most ludicrous thing I've ever seen in cinema. Yes, death by drapes. Jet Li is able to dispatch the henchmen with computer-generated cloth. How fucking fragile are these Mongolians that they get killed by fabric? That is not enough and the Emperor gets tied up. Mulan has another debate with the witch and the film tries to make out that she's not evil but misunderstood. Yes, that whole eviscerating a guy with monster claws was just a socially awkward moment. Mulan persuades her that being a woman with chi powers can earn you respect, and the witch has a change of heart and guides Mulan to the Emperor. Apparently, Bori is a bastard and deserves to be betrayed by the witchy bitch because he doesn't respect her enough. I just thought he knows how to keep his women in line. Treat them mean, keep them keen. Player. The witch has a final act of redemption by stopping an arrow intended for Mulan. Go on, kiss. Yes. Bori has set up a smelter to slowly burn the tied-up emperor in the world's crappiest Bond villain trap. I don't know why he doesn't kill him then and there. Even when Bori is on his ass, he tries to go for a quick kill. Oh, why am I thinking? Fuck it! Final battle time! Mulan faces off against Bori, but loses her father's sword in the fight. However, Jet Li gives Mulan a pep talk with his throat cancer, and that is all she needs to get psyched up. It's at this point Captain Marvel stops holding back and unleashes the full force of her true powers. Oh wait, I'm getting confused. 
Her chi level is over 9,000, so the gay pride phoenix pops up behind Mulan to do basic bitch symbolism of power and ascension. Where have I seen this before? Oh shit on a chandelier. Why did you remind me of season 8? Mulan don't need no sword, so everybody starts kung fu fighting. Those kicks were fast as lightning. After the stunt wires and computer graphics are done fondling our eyeballs, we get our finale kill of the big boss and it's a sight to behold. With a simple nod from Jet Li, Mulan instinctively knows he's going to throw the arrow in the air and expects her to do a parkour mid-air kick that would make a Brazilian footballer jealous. What the fuck was that? Mulan has demonstrated she is a warrior woman and gets more smoke blown up her ass. But when offered a place as the Emperor's guard, she refuses because she's just so humble and wants to go back home to that bitch Keiko O'Brien. You made Miles unhappy. No, no, no Star Trek fans here? Ah, yeah, yeah, whatever. Before she goes home to a life of domestic servitude, the film tries to cram in some sort of resolution to the half-baked romance subplot with Hong Huai. Still, there is nothing there. There is no chemistry because Mulan is a charisma void. Poor bloke doesn't even get a hug. Back to the barracks with you to beat your meat like it owes you money. At the inbreeding village, the home wrecker returns to praise and adulation. All is forgiven for the cross-dressing and theft. Mulan is still so amazing, and the Emperor sends his men to ask again to join his elite guard and bribes her with a new sword. Mulan looks at the sky and thinks of all the people she would be able to slaughter with impunity. The end! Special thanks to the Chinese government for letting Disney film near a Uyghur Muslim concentration camp. Aw, oh, isn't that thoughtful? What message is this film trying to convey? What is the take home? Um, China strong? Respect the military? Defeat foreign invaders? Women are all powerful but also must prostrate themselves and be subservient to an even more powerful patriarchy? Mulan feels like a mix of cultural ideas that tries to make everyone happy but fails because it's an impossible task. Westerners won't get a fun family film that kids can enjoy like Aladdin or Beauty and the Beast. And from the current Chinese reviews, the Eastern target audience find the film insulting to their culture and extremely ignorant. Mulan is a huge financial blunder for Disney and has generated them some bad publicity. This film is also a sign of the times. Hollywood's collusion with China has become very prevalent over the years. Studios are more than happy to sell out their values for a taste of profits from China and its booming economy. This has led to a bit of a culture clash as the West has different values. Western companies will happily be pro-Black Lives Matter and LGBTQ, but if anything about Hong Kong or Chinese corruption pops up, there is silence on social media lest they offend Daddy China. None of these companies have integrity, they just want money. And they don't care about your politics unless it makes a profit. So expect more media to pander to China and churn out homogenous gunk. In conclusion, don't waste your money on Mulan. And instead, stock up on shit tickets for a possible surge of coronavirus. Remember, in a post-apocalyptic scenario, whoever has the most toilet roll is king! Right, let's try this again. I've got a whole theatre to myself. I'm not getting coronavirus today. Hm. Ah, bollocks. Shoo! Go away! Just stay there. Go away. It's off. Go away. Uh, ah, fuck this. Christopher Nolan hasn't made a good film in ages anyway. Tell me your name. Ray Skywalker.